Hi there, Dr. Carmen McGinnis here with you. Today we're going to talk about how our attachment styles to our caregivers, our parents, impacts the way that we attach in adult relationships, how the two are so paired, and how we can maybe work with that a little bit. Stay with me. Thank you for joining me today. Dr. Carmen McGinnis here. So humans are drawn at an unconscious level to the familiar. This is evolutionary wired because quite simply it keeps us safe from the unknown. For a securely attached man or woman who learned from his or her primary parent that people are loving, dependable, and trustworthy, this is great news as far as adult relationships go. But for those men and women who are insecurely attached, the familiar is not the safest place. Let's look at each of the attachment styles to better understand how each forms adult partnerships. We already mentioned the securely attached individual. He or she learned that life is good, the world is safe, and love is lovely. He is going to look for and be attracted to a partner similar to the parent from whom he learned these lessons. This will be someone who shows love and expects to be shown love in return. Someone who expects the object of their love to love them reciprocally. Just like he experienced with loving caregivers who he loved back. On the very stark contrast are the three insecurely attached types. Among these, there is one anxious and two avoidant types of attachment. Anxiously attached individuals are preoccupied with relationships. They look to others to validate their worth as they never developed secure esteem from their parents. Although evil parents are out there, and we won't overlook that sad truth, most parents of anxious attachment types actually mean well. Most parents mean well. Again, not going to deny that there are evil people out there and that they are parenting children badly, but most people mean well. They may have been distracted or even self-obsessed, but they probably meant to do better, either because of their own history or the circumstances in which they found themselves, these parents simply could not manage their own needs and those of their children. They may have displayed love, but not with the consistency that children need. Or it may be that the inconsistency was actually between the parenting styles of the two parents. As children, anxious attachment types appear needy, reticent, and even fearful. As adults, they can be dependent and demanding in relationships, relationships of all sorts, actually. And they may move from one romantic relationship to another unless they happen to find someone who will put up with their needs. And I, I do emphasize put up with because it's almost impossible to provide for the needs of anxious attachment types. I have seen this as a therapist providing therapy for them as well, and it is something that we have to discuss. They're like a broken teacup that just cannot be filled. You cannot solve their problems. That person who you know whose problem you can't solve, no matter how good your idea is, that may well be one of them. Those with avoidant attachment present two different behavior types, fearful or dismissive. The parenting of the two avoidant types is actually very similar. As children, these two types may have cared for their 
own parents or siblings, physically, emotionally, or both. By caring for the parents, they may have kept the balance in the home, preventing their parents' depression, discord in the home, or even violence, and sometimes aimed at the child himself. They learned early that life is unpredictable, that, that they have to manage or manipulate things in order to get what they need. As mentioned, although their childhoods may have been similar, fearful and dismissive avoidance present differently in adulthood, very differently, in fact. Fearful avoidant adults are insecure in their self-worth. This isn't always obvious. They may appear to be perfectly adjusted in that regard. However, it's demonstrated by consistently trying to prove themselves by caring and doing for others. In this way, they build a reserve of self-worth, always aware that they may have to go it alone at some point in the future. They crave intimacy, but their distrust and fear of being hurt impedes real intimacy. And although they long to be cared for mutually, they have a fear of physical and emotional dependence on others that prevents it. And although they genuinely enjoy caring for their partners and other people and appear on the surface to be close to their partner, they tend to maintain a safe emotional distance. Fearful avoidance may be the most difficult partners because they send out very mixed signals as I've detailed here. And it's often the case that many fearful avoidance settle into a single lifestyle after a few failed attempts. As mentioned, the dismissive avoidant may have had a similar family situation to the fearful avoidant, although it may have been more extreme. But in either case, it presents very differently in adulthood. The Dismissive avoidant appears to have a more positive self-image than did the fearful avoidant. But deep inside is a sad baby who failed to have his or her needs met. This drives him to seek constant attention. However, it's not just your typical kind of attention. Instead of that healthy attention that we all want, the dismissive avoidant needs to be seen at the top of the heap, the best in everything that he values. And what he or she isn't good at, they tend to regard as unimportant, dismissing it, even if someone that they claim to care about is good at it. It's not that important, not as important as what they're good at. He may initiate many relationships in his life, he or she. However, he receives only fleeting comfort from them because of all of the above. For this reason, he tends to start and never really finish relationships and may have two or three or more partners at a time. To an extreme, this individual may fall on the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder. Incapable of empathy, disregarding the boundaries of others, and unable to open to intimacy. So hopefully you've been able to see from this how we veer toward what we're used to and what we're good at. We become very good as children. Our, our, the adults in our lives provide for all of our needs. So we have to be good at managing them. It's our job as children to figure out how to get what we need from those people that can give it to us. So as grown-ups, we are attracted to similar types of people and we bring to that moment the way that we've developed because of our parents. And in this way, it's very much of a triangle. It's us being born into the family we're born into, then how we develop from that, and then how we attract others from that. And to me, the therapeutic piece is getting back to the beginning, closing the triangle and 
that very much is a therapeutic process. And I want to be clear about that because often um, I fear that people might think I'm pitching therapy on this, uh, on this channel, and I'm not. Um, what I'm pitching is mental health and relationship health. And frequently, therapeutic processes can be engaged in independent of a therapist. We can go out and seek what we need. So one of the things I am pitching on this channel is my course, Raising Your Inner Child. And that is one way to make beginning strides toward getting out of that result that you were left with, closing that triangle that I described a moment ago. One way. Certainly therapy is another, and there are many, many, many gifted therapists out there. I will leave a few links in the description box below so that you can reach out to some of them. Certainly I'll put a link to my course, uh, Raising Your Inner Child, and there is also a book. I wrote um, a manual, a paper, if you prefer paper and pen, there's a manual, Raising Your Inner Child, that you can use instead of the online course. The online course has downloads that you can go through activities, the same activities, but it just depends on if you prefer video or just reading paper and pen. And I'll put up links to some other really remarkable individuals that have impacted this field, that have been my mentors and guided me on my path, my own personal path, and my path as a therapist, as an attachment therapist. So I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing you on a Wednesday for my midweek sneak peek. Until then, have a wonderful week, and I will see you soon. Take care.